So first I'd like to thank viewers for asking questions. Um, when you ask questions, sometimes it, it, it reminds me of things that might make a good YouTube video, uh, concepts that I've had to learn and that, uh, you know, somebody new to a particular concept might know, not know something. And um, so I wanted to take a look at some, at some op amp circuits since we've been talking about op amps lately. And let's just take a look at three simple circuits. I've shown these, you know, the unity gain, non-inverting. Uh, this is a amplification, uh, non-inverting. This circuit, you can only have gains of one and higher. This is an inverting amplifier, so uh, uh, it inverts the polarity as it goes across. And also, you can use this circuit to have gains less than one. So if you only want a gain of a half or something like that, you can, you can do that with this circuit. Okay, so um, let's first take a look at, uh, at the top circuit. It's the simplest, so let's do that. All right, um, I have a uh, TLO72 op amp in here, um, and I'm running a function generator into the input, and let's take a look at the output. Uh, this is what the output looks like, so I just have a, a triangle wave. Uh, let me move the scope over to the input. Uh, that's the input, and that's the output. So they're the same, right? So unit again, unit again buffer. So I've got a, um, let's see here, five volts per division. So it's about plus or minus five volts. Let's see if we can change that amplitude a little bit down here. There we go, there's, there's about plus or minus five volts. And uh, so I'm running this at uh, the op amp off of plus or minus 12 volts. So if we have an offset uh, in the positive directions, then the circuit will eventually clip. Uh, the op amp can't go all the way to its rail. Then if we go the other direction towards the minus 12 volt rail, again, uh, not only does it start to clip, it starts to do really weird things. Um, and so I think I've shown this before, but it's very important to know when you reach that bottom rail, uh, it can do very strange things. So you need to make sure that you operate the, the op amp within its, within, its, uh, within its bounds, okay? And so, um, what are those bounds? Well, you have to read the, you have to read the data sheet. Uh, so let's read the data sheet on the uh, LM072. The, uh, uh, what, the TL072, I don't know if I've said TL or not, anyway, TL072. Um, is part of a family. There's the TL071, 72s, uh, 74s, which are the quad versions. <coughs> the 71s are the single versions with offset adjustments. And uh, they're good for certain things, but what we're interested in is how can we use them? So if we go here to the electrical, char electrical characteristics, uh, we can take a look at things like uh, common mode input voltage. So that means that the range of voltages on the input that still uh, works well. And then uh, maximum peak power, not peak power, peak output voltage swing. And so we look over here and we say, oh, okay, uh, plus minus 12 volts. Okay, great. Um, so you think everything, everything's fine. Zoom in a bit here. But you have to read up here under these, these conditions that the, the part's being operated at plus or minus 15. So at plus or minus 15, they're only guaranteeing that it will swing plus or minus 12. Which means <laughs> uh, there's three volts there that you can't use. Uh, if you're being careful, you just can't use those. It says typically it might be 13 and a half with a plus or minus 15 volt supply, but we can't guarantee that. It says typical maybe, but we can't guarantee that. We'll guarantee plus or minus 12. So you have to be very careful uh, of how far you can push these op amps. So a volt and a half to, th to, to three volts, right? Uh, something different. But you say, but 
you're operating off plus or minus 12. So what does it do at plus or minus 12? Well, actually, we don't know. The data sheet wasn't written. It wasn't characterized at plus or minus 12. It was characterized at plus or minus 15. So you have to actually extrapolate. You actually have to make a guess. Maybe it's linear from over VCC. Maybe it's not, but you just have to make a guess. Um, so if it's plus, if it's a maximum of uh, plus or minus 12 volts, well, that's a three volt difference. At plus or minus 12 volts, hmm, is it a two volt difference? Is it a two and a half volt difference? Well, uh, we don't know. We really don't know. Um, we can measure it here at uh, plus or minus 15. It's a one. Uh, typically, it's a one and a half volt difference. So, and so, what did we, what did we see over here? Um, as I went up, it's starting to clip at about. Uh, 12, wait a minute, 5, 15, 12, yeah, it's getting very close to 12 volts. So it's doing much better than the data sheet. Now in the, in the negative direction, it's not doing as well. Right at about 11 volts, it starts to go wonky. Uh, so anyway, so you need to read the data sheet. Very important to read the data sheet. So uh, let's take a look at using this part single-ended uh, or, or single rail. Let's say that we want to operate this thing from ground to plus 12. Well, how well is it going to do? Well, the data sheet doesn't talk about that. Data sheet doesn't describe that condition. Uh, we really don't know what's going to happen. So let's do it. Let's uh, put uh, the negative rail at ground. All right, so if we uh, operated from minus 12 to plus 12, and we could only go maybe plus and minus 10 volts, well, from ground to 12 volts, maybe we can get up to 10 volts. We certainly can't get to ground though. Maybe we can only get to two volts. So. Um, we're going to have to change our function generator because we were putting in plus and minus voltages. So we're going to have to add some kind of offset to get us away from that, that negative portion. And there we go, we are. So now we can operate. So that's about where we can operate. We can go to about hmm, a little less than a volt to eh, about 11 volts maybe. Something like that. So, so that's our usable range. It looks about the same. It does that weird phase inversion thing. Uh, but we certainly can't get to ground. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a look at this circuit. Uh, we'll put in a gain of two, uh, something like that. I'll put in a uh, maybe a, a 20K and a 10K. Okay, so how did we do? Oops, we're clipping already. So remember we had about uh, plus or minus five volts going in and it's already clipping because I'm adding a gain of two. So let's lower the, uh, let's lower the amplitude here. So we've got back down to about plus or minus, plus or minus five volts. Let's take a look at the input. Uh, move my scope over to the input. You can see the input smaller and the output is bigger. Okay, so we got a gain of two. So how does a gain of two work? All right, so let's add some, let's add some offset to this. We can go up and we start banging our head uh, right at about the same spot, right around 11 volts. And we go down and we're going down to about 10 volts and we're flat, we're flat right at 10 volts. So we can't go below 10 volts, okay? So 10 volts. And it, but it doesn't do that weird phase inversion thing, which is nice. Or not, not phase inversion isn't the right word, but uh, it goes wonky. All right, so okay, so let's take this circuit and let's run it from 12 volts to ground. 
So let me change the minus rail to ground. And there we go. Yikes. Went completely bonkers. So, hmm. <laughs> Why did it go bonkers? Well, uh, part of our signal on the input's going negative, so that's not going to be good. So we need to put in some offset to get rid of that. So let's uh, bring up our, there we go, bring up our offset to get it off the ground. All right. And then, uh, wow, look at all this distortion. It's not operating very well, is it? Uh, so we are banging our head up around 11 volts. And the negative direction, we're banging our head about two and a half volts, something like that. So it's operating over a much smaller, much smaller range. So let's see if we can't get uh, a little smaller amplitude here. It's hard for me to do a smaller amplitude. Uh, let's see. Let's click this button. There we go. And now we can do a smaller amplitude but uh, it's really not acting well at all. It has, uh, has a lot of distortion in the signal. It's not linear at all. So I'm not exactly sure where in the data sheet you can find that. Um, you'd think everything would be fine. You'd think you could operate it off a lower, a lower point, but it doesn't seem to be. Uh, and what is our offset again? We're, it, oh, it does do that weird phase inversion thing now that we have uh, in. Yeah, it does. If we go too low, it does that weird thing. Well, there you go. Uh, so now we have two problems. Uh, our headroom is much smaller as we, as we expected, and we're banging our head, because uh, we could banging our head, and we've introduced uh, a very bad distortion to the, uh, to the circuit. All right. So that's what that that circuit happens. Uh, let's look at the let's look at the third circuit. All right, now we're going to be looking at this circuit here, and uh, I've wired it up. So here we go, and everything looks great. Um, you don't know it's an inverting amplifier because we're going around we're going around ground. But if I put in a positive offset, it goes down. If I put in a, a negative offset, it goes up. So it is an inverting amplifier. So it's about plus or minus uh, five volts. So let's go in the up direction. Oh, go in the up direction. I'm going to add a negative offset to go in the up direction, and it's going to clip at about 11 volts. And then the negative direction, it's going to clip right around and 11 volts. So it's kind of op uh, operating the same. It's not doing the weird thing at the negative part. OK, so that's the uh, inverting amplifier. So let's run it from ground to plus 12. So let me put this on ground. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Not that one. Uh, make sure everything's still okay here. Wait a minute, I've screwed it up. Sorry. There we go. All right. So I'm going to move the negative rail to ground. And yikes, something happened. Something happened bad. So let's lower the amplitude. Let's Let's put in some offset. Oh, I can't make it. I can't make it healthier. Why can't I make it healthier? I'm going to change the amplitude smaller. I'm going to change the offset. Yeah, nothing's making this healthy. So why is it not acting healthy? I can't make it work. Well, that's because of this. Uh, we're saying no matter what happens on the input, the differential amplifier is going to try to make these do the same, but the thing can't operate at ground. It doesn't know how to operate at ground, right? So how do we fix that in the circuits that have ground as the uh, negative rail? Well, you have to create a virtual ground. Uh, instead of having this tied to ground, we're going to uh, 
we're going to tie it to, uh, let's say, 6 volts, which is halfway between ground and 12. So if we tie this to 6 volts, then uh, no matter what happens on the input, these two will be the same, which would be 6 volts, and then it should start to work again. So let's see if we can do that. In fact, I have 5 volts available, so we'll do it with 5 volts. Uh, let's see. Let's do this. We'll put this at 5 volts. Okay. So I'm going to call my virtual ground 5 volts. Okay. So with the virtual ground of 5 volts, let's see if we can let's see if we can make this thing happy. Uh, let's see. There we go. It's starting to work there. And now I can take that off. I can change the amplitude. There we go. So um, let's see here. Let me get a. Oh, I can't exactly adjust it, but anyway, you can see that we're actually making it work now. So how far down can we go? Well, we can go down to about mm, volt and a half, and then the up direction to about. Uh, 11, 12 volts. I mean, no, I'm mean 11 volts. Something like 11 to one and a half. So that's the usable range that we can that we can use this thing at. Um, it'd be a little bit better if we had six volts um, as the center, as the virtual ground. Uh, but five volts is close. Oops. So. Um, so which of these circuits can you use? Well, let's see. Why, oops, I'm sorry. I keep banging you guys around. Uh, let, me, let me adjust the camera. All right. So why do we want to use op amps? Well, sometimes we want to amplify small signals or add high impedance because we have a small signal and we don't want to ruin it. So let's say we have a 0 to 100 millivolt signal that we want to do something with. So if we have this circuit, 0 to 100 millivolts, um, it works just fine at plus and minus uh, rails. Uh, but uh, did it work near ground with a with a uh, with a uh, with a negative with a, a grounded rail? No, you can't get down to that small voltage. So this 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 won't work. Uh, okay, how about this one? 0 to 100 millivolts. Um, let's see, it's non-inverting, so 0 to 100. Uh, no, that one didn't get down there either, did it? Hmm. Uh, did this one work down here? No, that one didn't, that one didn't work either, so... But you can see all of these are going to have problems with low signals. So let's say your signal goes between 0 and 100 millivolts. Well, that one just stopped working, and that one just stopped working, and that one just stopped working. So you, you, that 0 to 100 volt millivolts that you were trying to measure is just not going to work with these things. So the takeaway here is that op amps are great, um, but they're much easier to use and think about if you have plus or minus uh, voltages as the rails. Um, then they operate around ground easily. Um, they can look at small signals. They can amplify small signals. Um, they're just much, much nicer devices if you have plus and minus voltages on them. If you do need to go to uh, a ground uh, single, single rail uh, configuration, then you just need to take a lot more care and you have to have a lot more understanding of your part and a lot more understanding of the limitations of your parts. And a lot of times you have to, you have to shift things up to a, uh, to a virtual ground uh, I've drawn a virtual ground here, uh, but it can be much more complex than that. Uh, sometimes you actually need to uh, move your uh, a, a virtual ground for your input as well. Um, so a lot of times that's easier to do with AC signals and DC signals. So it becomes very complicated. So if you're beginning with op amps, stick with plus and minus. If you want to go to to single rail, yeah, beware. <laughs>